This is what's called a rotary engine, and it was used by several different types of cars, including one you might recognize, the Mazda RX-7. And what makes it unique from your regular type of car engine is its use of rotors instead of pistons. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you all of the components needed for the assembly, how they work together in order to move, and then how the whole system performs the combustion cycle. So laid out right here is all of the components used for this particular model. First off, we got the front and back plate. And you'll notice the holes here at the top of both of them, and those are what's called the intake ports, where fuel can come in to enter the system. And then we got the center plate. The center plate can divide the two rotors and prevent gas exchange happening between the two. And you might notice at the top here that there's two more holes, which are again intake ports and provide air fuel mixture for either side of the center plate. And then we got the two rotor housings right here that allows for the rotor to move around in a snug motion. On both rotor housings, you'll notice two holes in the back here, and those are the spaces for the spark plugs. The spark plugs are basically a component that can send an electrical shock in order to ignite fuel. Then over here, we could see the exhaust ports. That's where all of that ignited fuel will leave the system. Then we got the eccentric shaft. The eccentric shaft will hold the rotors themselves, and it'll hold one rotor at a higher level and one rotor at a lower level. And you'll also notice that the two rotors are 180 degrees offset, which basically means that they look upside down to each other. And you'll also notice inside of these rotors is that there's these internal ring gears. And those internal ring gears will mesh with a little something called a fixed pinion. And that fixed pinion allows for more control over which direction the face of the rotor sort of points towards. And we could see right here without the gear system, that the rotors just spin randomly, without any direction or orientation. It's like they're lost. We all were at one point. And now we could look at the full assembly to see how all of these components work together in order to move. So you can see the rotor housing and the plates allowing for a snug little area of space for the rotors to move in. Then you got the eccentric shaft which holds the actual rotors, and the fixed pinion which controls the orientation of the rotors. And that's fun and all, but how does combustion happen? The rotary engine uses what's called a four-stroke combustion cycle, meaning that it has to go through four phases in order to complete a cycle, those four being intake, compression, combustion, and exhaust. The intake phase is when the rotor expands a small area into a larger volume, which creates a vacuum that sucks in this air-fuel mixture from the outside into the intake ports and into the system. When the rotor has rotated far enough, allowing enough air-fuel mixture to come in, it blocks off that intake port, refusing to allow any more in. Then the compression phase begins, where all of that air-fuel mixture is squeezed into a small volume right here onto the right. All that air-fuel mixture is conveniently placed right next to where the spark plugs would be, and the spark plugs would then send that electrical shock which would ignite all of that fuel. The combustion phase would then begin, with the ignition using the force of pressure to push the rotor across that whole bottom portion. This is what causes a drive on that eccentric shaft so that it can spin in a fast motion. Once we've used all that fuel, we don't really need it anymore and it can go through the exhaust valves. And once the exhaust phase finishes, we have completed one cycle of combustion. Then the system repeats that over and over again. Now what I want you to notice is that all of these phases are simultaneously happening together. So for example, we could see at the top here that we're in the intake phase. Then if we go down a bit to the right, we can see that the compression stage has pretty much just ended and the combustion stage is about to begin. Then if we go down to the bottom left corner, we can see that the exhaust phase is also happening. And another thing that I want you to keep in mind is that there's a whole nother rotor on the other side. And I mentioned that the two rotors are 180 degrees offset and that would mean that the two rotors are doing the opposite phases of one another. So having said all of that, you can clearly see that there is a lot going on within the rotary engine. So for now, that's pretty much all I can explain about this rotary engine to you. I really hope you enjoyed, and more importantly, I hope you learned. And if you are new here, this is pretty much the stuff that I like to do. Design, print, and explain. If that intrigues you, make sure you go watch another, otherwise I will see you in the next video.